think I did all of that without the microphone on. Probably sounded like Good morning. I'm standing here in basically what is the, well, the dining table will be there, the kitchen will be there, the living room area, and then there'll be like a breakfast nook over along those windows. Well, yesterday I ended up with, uh, I ended by just kind of tidying up this area and getting my scaffold over to where I needed to start the air barrier. And what I mean by air barrier is I need to create a plane pretty much anywhere on the ceiling, somewhere in the ceiling, that prevents any air leakage from going up and out. Because I've already got the floor, basically, the slab downstairs. Also in the crawl space, I'll build another air barrier for that floor. And the walls have got the blue skin for an air barrier. And the, the blue skin links up with the floor to create an airtight system. The last piece of that system will be the top. So we've got the bottom and the walls, and now we just need the top. Originally, I was thinking I was going to just put the air barrier right where the ceiling sheetrock would go. Above that would be outside of the air envelope. So the whole entire attic space would just be you know, free to the outside, uh, be the same temperature as outside. But there's, that presents some issues with how many different ceiling heights we have. Um, I'm gonna be dropping the ceiling over here in the bathroom. Uh, the master gets dropped. Uh, the master bath gets dropped. So it's a very three-dimensional surface to begin with. So, I mean, I would end up requiring me to be air sealing like you know, stud bays and stuff like that on the inside. And that's one way to do it. Another way would have been I could have had a non-vented roof and then done like furring strips on top of that on, that the metal would then sit on to prevent, to allow the metal to cool off or to, to be colder. My initial design for this house was to have a framed roof and that would have been you know with a vaulted complete vaulted ceilings and we could have used like SIPs or just done sealed bays and spray foam them or something to that effect and that would have been a lot easier probably but it would have been a lot more expensive at the time I just thought well I'll just put the put the air barrier on the ceiling and we'll go with blown in insulation and it'll be more traditional but we'll be able to find framers to do it quick and fast with trusses and so and that was uh, the advice of our architect he said I'd highly recommend getting trusses because it's just the area we're in it's going to be a lot easier to find framers who can throw up a house with, the, uh, tr with trusses as the roof rather than a framing, framed roof. But anyways, so I started kind of thinking, okay, well, if I don't put it on the ceiling, where else could I put it? Because I've already slapped the roof down. I can't kind of like try to use the roof as, as the air barrier and then try to put furring strips because that's, you know, 30, that ship has sailed. So then I thought, well, maybe I can install plywood kind of along the underside of the top cords of the trusses. You know, they're all two by sixes all the way down. And I could just somehow get up there and get sheets in there and sheet it, sheet basically the underside of the top cord and try to cut around all the webbing and stuff. And it would be a nightmare. <laughs> but that location or relative location would be really quite ideal, I think. You would get a, quite, a, quite an airspace between the roof and the heated area, which would help make the cold roof be colder and function better. But also now the soffits are all interlinked in with those bays nicely rather than having some kind of uh, vent kind of hidden under flashing, which is how a lot of cold roofs are done. Anyways, I thought, well, there's got to be an easier way. So instead of going sideways, I just thought, well, I'll just fill each bay with 
22 and a half, and I'll just nail little nailers on the side, one, like one by twos on the sides. If I nail them about an inch back from the face, then a half inch of OSB, uh, that would leave me basically the board set back half an inch. And that would be just a nice amount of space to be able to run a big fat beta caulk right down and seal both sides. Wherever there's a butt joint between the two pieces, I would just use tape. Um, because you, it, caulking a butt joint is a recipe for failure. So I got some good tape. I got a ton of one by twos. Ton of one by twos. A big pile of half inch OSB. And I've got a bunch of sealant that's back at home staying warm. Today I'm just going to get started. I'm going to start throwing one by twos on the sides. I'm going to start. Start over in the corner there where the yellow ladder is and really I'm going to start on one of the really pain in the butt parts. The overhang is there's lookouts that go out so I can't just fill the bay like I can everywhere else. So I'm going to have to kind of fill on top of the surface and then kind of link up the two. I'll, I'll just show you. It'll make more sense when you see me on the other side over there. And then the other pain in the butt is just going around the penetrations, but there's not a whole lot of those. The chimney will be a pain, and then all the penetrations are generally in the center of the roof. I mean, none of it's going to be fun, but... Oh, and the other part of it, before I forget, was once I get the boards up there, get it taped, get it caulked, and just try to generally get as good of an air seal like, as I can with just wood, caulk, and tape. I then want to go back and spray it with one inch of closed cell foam on the entire surface. And also I'm going to, I'm going to hit the gable ends too on each end, just the surfaces. And I'll also hit, see these skylights up here. So these, these bays here, I think I'll, I'm going to have to kind of that's the other tricky part. It's just I'm going to have to air seal to the edge somehow. Basically, I just have to link up with the 2x6 frame that forms the skylights and continue the air barrier around them. So you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, this poor bastard. I'm trying to stay positive. I know that once this is done, and oh, and yeah, almost, I'll end up spray foaming probably around these skylights because the blown in won't, you know, there'll be part of it that will be exposed. So I don't want them to be big cold spots up there. But between the wood and my taping and the caulking and then the spray foam, I'm thinking that I'll get a pretty good seal at least good enough to uh, call it a day. The roof should be able to breathe really well. And, you know, the actual roof members can cool off before it hits the decking. You know, I always kind of question whether or not just laying furring strips on top of a warm roof, you know, giving that tiny air gap would really be enough to prevent condensation problems inside there. You know, if your furring rots out, the metal becomes unstable and, you know, you might end up having to replace your roof after 20 years. You know, good roofing that should last two, three times that. I don't know. Oh, and speaking of rot, the last thing I'm, or the other thing that I need to run and get is uh, I got, got some mold spray. And just as a preventative, I want to kind of lightly mist everything as I go. Because if we ever get a rain event like we had when we first started building this place, it was like three weeks of just torrential downpours, you know? And it was, it's, it was, it's hard to believe, like uh, just three straight weeks of rain. And by the third, you know, end of the third week, just everything started to mold. Everything. <laughs> Everything that wasn't in a heated space, like, like, and not just here over at my, my little cabin, just mold showing up all over the place on the outside of it. And the barn, 
yeah, it was, it was just so wet for too long. Like, so if we ever have that event again, I want to at least have some insurance because I already ran around and sprayed as much as I could pretty much. Um, but I never got like a lot of the underside of the sheeting. I got, you know, as much as I could reach easily with the ladder, but it doesn't spray that far. So anyways, that's a lot of info. How about some work? This stuff for the mold control. And put it in here because you really just need a really fine mist. You don't need to soak it at all. You got some two inch nails for the one by two. This is for any framing that I need to do. Got the caulk still at home, but that's the gun for it. Just the far one was a pain over here, but the rest of them, real easy. So this isn't gonna be, isn't gonna be too bad, you know? It's just, uh, it's gonna get harder as they go up, just at various spots for access and standing. But if I get some boards in here and just lay them across the trusses, then I can just kind of walk around. It's just gonna be a lot of up and down. And I mean, it's really easy. I don't even have to measure because it's just an inch. I can just nail them on there. So I think I'll just do this whole first row here all the way down. You know, I was thinking while I was doing it that I'm sure some pros are watching thinking I am out of my mind, but I'm doing this because I don't have to pay for labor. Um, you know, I can, a lot of this, like the blue skin, uh, is, you don't find much information about it because it just, it, it takes so much labor that it's that that makes these houses are already rare as it is but then a house with a full peel and stick job uh, and as much labor as I'm putting into it is very rare so you know this is more this is very interesting from being able to build from a perspective of the of we have as much labor as, as I want to throw at it basically and so we get to do th I get to do things that are even less common because it's just it's too expensive. But if you're building your house or if you just are interested in building science, then a lot of the stuff I'm doing is going to be very interesting and also uh, it's just good to have kind of add to the conversation and expand uh, expand the knowledge base when it comes to these high performance homes. So that's part of the reason why I'm making these videos too, because a lot of what I'm doing is just not going to be able to be tried very often out in the real world because it's, the labor is just so expensive. But anyways, so if you're sitting there thinking to yourself how crazy I am for doing all this, I'm doing it because the labor is free for me. And so therefore, I want the best possible product and peel and stick and, and having to go through and really spend the extra time to detail this to the point where I can feel really confident that I'm going to have good blower door tests and I know that that spray foam is going to take up any slack that that, any holes that that has and that vice versa is going to help the spray foam be that much more airtight. 
it would just be nice. Well, we'll see. I need to go eat some lunch because I'm starving, but uh, see how far I can make it today. I'll shoot for getting all the rest of these ones in and then the whole next, the whole next row of full eight foot pieces. I hadn't really noticed this part, <laughs> but this is definitely going to be the hardest part of this whole air barrier plane thing I want to do. So, unfortunately, when these trusses got laid out, we ended up putting the two, because uh, it's a 45 foot span, there was going to be a spot where there was um, two trusses that were only a foot apart and the rest would be two feet apart. So this is the spot where they are only one foot apart. The problem is there's a wall right under it. And now I have to try to get up, up in there. Yeah. And I think I can get up in there with a palm nailer. But the other corner shouldn't Shouldn't be as bad. I think it's over the over the um, the bathroom, but right here, and especially this corner, like up further, it won't be so bad. I can easily get in there, you know. But right here, oh no, caulking it too. That's the real hard part. It's like I can get the pieces in there and hand nail them in, and then slip the piece of wood down in there. But getting a caulk a good caulk bead in there is going to be tough. See, it's starting to get, the sun's going down. So I'm going to do this hard part, and if I have energy after that, then I'll keep going. But if not, I'm already guessing that this is going to be a real pain. And I'm probably going to want to quit after this, or play some drums. So, we'll see. Seven and a quarter. There we go. That wasn't so bad. If that was the hardest part, then the rest will be easy. in a pretty epic sunset tonight. I'll go out there so you can get a little better look. But, so, this is as far as I'm gonna make it today. I'm calling it a day. I wouldn't be able to finish the whole side tonight because I've got the, the chimney to contend with. So, no biggie. I'll just leave these for tomorrow and really those will go real quick and the first major job of tomorrow will be wrapping, making a box around that chimney so that I can air seal around the chimney. Let's go outside and look at that sunset.